so we are back for some more work in our altered book here on YouTube. I'm so excited about this project. But I tell you, so excuse my desk. There's a lot of offspring here because I've been working on these like DIY collage stamps with my bits and pieces. Don't they look good? Let me get try to get close enough. And anyway, um, yep, look at the glue on my fingers, but yep. So um, I've been spraying and coffee dyeing them right here on my desk. So anyway, and uh, we'll be doing some of those. I'll be using some of those in my work. So a lot to get covered. So I'm going to jump right in. First of all, thank you and welcome to the channel here and to this project. If you're new, you can go back. There's a playlist and I'm always putting these on the playlist. So you want to see what the first couple were. You can go back to that. Um, and otherwise, we're going to jump into our altered book. So today I'm going to show you this uh, faux mem memo um, because they they sent it to me. They asked me if I would review it. This is not so much a review per se, but I like to do my reviews as a part of us actually using it. And honestly, I have thought about this and wondered, ah, oh, like how are these? And um, this baby is a result of what I did on this little machine and I'm gonna tell you how I did it because you know I did more to it than it just coming out but I love it I'm so glad that I had the opportunity to say yes to this little box um it may not be for everyone but if you guys are like me and really like to make your things and kind of have a lot of fun and you don't pro have a problem with investing in your art supplies I would definitely recommend this product and I'm gonna show you how I use it now you guys know I work with Arteza. I say no to more, um, you know, partnerships, collabs than I ever say yes to because most of them just don't go with my style of art and I don't want to take anything or be a part of anything and just or come here and just give a false review because it's not worth it to me. I don't get paid for doing these reviews. All I get is a product um, and or an affiliate link. So when you go through that and you purchase something, I get a percentage um, you know, four or five or, or 10%, something like that. Um, and it doesn't cost you any more because you get a discount code. So oftentimes it's cheaper. So that's how it works. Just for those of you who may be wondering or thinking, oh, here, you know, because sometimes when I do, like if I do a review of something, sometimes I get, you know, oh, you know, you, you don't have to do this review. But I'm doing it because A, I want to try the product. And B, if I if I'm able to do it to save you guys some money, or if you've been on the fence and you're like, I, I don't know, then, you know, you got somebody who's reviewing it for you without it being an expense. So anyway, just to put that out there. So right now, I'm going to show you the inspiration for the book, for our altered book. I just finished this book over in Patreon this year in, in my uh, $25 level, the going deeper behind the scenes in the studio. We're doing a lot of books. Every month we're doing some kind of book structure. In this one, I'm big on male art and I'm sort of dealing a lot more with male art these days. Like that's the focus in my studio, my work, my projects, my collages, everything kind of is like revitalizing that from the 30s and 40s art scene. So this is a book that we just finished. These are all collage postcards that I made last month. Um, we did a lot of that. It's in a concertina binding. Um, it's a lot of fun, but you see each one is different. It's designed to sort of have this old world look to it. Um, like each of them were collected somewhere. So that's one that we just finished. And this is inspiration for the one we're working on. And if you guys are familiar with Nick Bantock, I love his work. I bought his books early. I mean, 20 something years ago when he first started doing the series. And I was just always fascinated with, and he really, uh, with his Griffin and Sabine series, really jumped in and did a lot with male art. Um, I think his earlier books, this is one of his more recent books, I mean, or one of the later books. And um, it's okay. I think his earlier ones to me were just a little bit more mystical, more fascinating. Like I love, this is all male art, postal art that he's done. Um, he makes the stamps and the seals and everything. So I'm kind of like going to this place of being inspired by Nick Bantock. If you have his books, pull them out and get some inspiration. If you're not familiar with him, get, get them from the library or on Amazon. They're normally like eight or nine dollars. Get one and just 
see, you know, experience it. You can even look them up on Google, Nick, N-I-C-K, Bantock, B-A-N-T-O-C-K. Lots of his images are there if you get images. So I wanted to show you kind of where I'm going with our project. I have to have my, my notes for the video because... I have like so many different projects going that I find I like to keep notes and then I know where I am. So this is another one that I printed out earlier and um, did that. And that's from one of my postcards I just showed you. It's actually, a, uh, I took a picture on my phone of the postcard. Let me see if I have it here. And then I... It's just that easy. I was able to take it. I was able to send it right with my phone. Send it right to... Where is it? It's like the same one here. Only it was it's smaller. Um, because it reduced... The, the camera reduces it. Um, maybe what I'll do is I'll just show you guys real quick. Because it's, it's super duper easy. So you're able to just... Um... um we just find something here to take a picture of so you guys can see how easy it is you know and i'll just i'll do it of this because then we can use it because these are going to be like little stickers that we can put on the book so now it prints in black and white which i'm fine with because i figured out as soon as i print them out in black and white how to color them so that's what i'm gonna show you guys real quick so literally you can um, take your phone and take the camera. I'm literally going to take a picture of it. You guys can sort of see me right here. So I took a picture of it. Okay. Now I'm literally going to go over to, let me turn it on. It's crazy easy. Oh my goodness. Um, I'm going to go over to their app, hit print image. It's going, I'm going to find the image, which is the one we just took a picture of. It's going to find the, the printer. It's going to hit connect it. I'm going to hit print. Okay. Can you guys get with that? <laughs> I love it. Oh my goodness. This is my new favorite toy. I'm sorry. Me and this little printer are going to spend a lot of time together because now that's what it printed out. It prints in black and white, like I said. I get this thing to focus. Come on. My camera is like there. Okay, so a nice print. They say it has like a five to 10 year life uh, in terms of how long the print will last. And photo art, mail art kind of runs in that category, like photocopies are sort of similar. But let me show you what. I'm done and then we're going to get to collaging. Let me just move this over real quick. So when it came out black and white, I was like, ah, I'm okay with that. But I'm um, here. I'm going to show you also, this is a picture of, uh, where is, this is one of my Rothko's here that I did in the black and white. Where is the actual image? Uh, so many papers here. Well, you guys believe me. I have a black and white image of. I just took the picture earlier today, actually. But anyhow, this was a black and white Rothko. And I um oh I bet you it's anyway. I let me get this stuff out the way because I want to use that. And so basically what I did is I took a picture of the original, then it I scanned it on the uh, faux memo and you can see how it's the black is at the bottom the whites at the top nothing astonishing but i purposely did that because i'm going to show you how i can stamp this up and then these are pieces that we'll use in our our um, book here because we're able to actually take and reproduce things so we put these to the side so one of the first things that I did was, um, I'm going to use, we can use anything to color it. Like I used um, some distressed ink, the re-inking part of it. We can use the Liquitex 
acrylic inks. So let me just use a little bit of this so you guys can see. So I just really put a little bit on a cotton ball and then literally you can stain this thing. It stains beautifully. And even though we just did the ink, the ink is really permanent. It doesn't smear. So you see how just a quick coloration and I can make it as dark or as light as I want. I'm going to keep it a little bit sort of neutral so I can kind of work it in with what I'm doing. And on this one, we're going to do, so I'm going to show you what we're going to do next. I'm going to keep this one plain. So I could do as much of this or as little. I can use um, the, I can use gathered twig on the distressed, these distressed inks work beautifully. See? So you can use your distress ink. What I like about this is that stuff that you already have, you can just grab and use in a completely different way. So that just kind of gave sort of that, and I kind of want this sort of uneven old world kind of look to it. You guys know that. So then from there, I had the idea to pull out the jelly plate. So I'm going to use this Arteza. This is their new iridescent um, colors. This is Playful Pink. I love these. I'm actually going to do, next week I'm going to do a thing with all of these and we'll jelly print. Um, let me just make sure I'm on the right side here. We'll jelly print with uh, with them for our next, the next thing I'm, we're going to do in the book. We'll just jelly print with some of these iridescent colors. They are really good so you only need to put a little bit on the plate do my glazing technique I'm get it nice and thin so I'll lay this black and white one down so you can see now even though this is an iridescent it's a pearl it has kind of like a pink tint to it it's enough just to kind of glaze the print and the whole idea is to glaze the print and to lock the color in so I don't know if you can sort of see how, um, see, oh, see the glazing on there. See that purpley pink? It is just yummy. So then from there, I would simply just take my stamp and maybe using the dress, distressed oxide in the black soot. I have this little Chinese stamp that, uh, or Japanese that one of a couple of my students at retreat gifted me. I'm so excited. I'm not gonna put the whole thing on there. Let's just say, use that much of it. So now using the Distress Inks, you can stamp right on top of it. Look how yummy that looks. I'm gonna keep this sort of black and white like that, but I could literally, cause I don't wanna spend a lot of time on this. I just wanna show you guys so that you can see how we're making are things what was I going to show you though oh um I can literally take this which one I like the we use hickory smoke and using some of my stamps oh boy I have stuff everywhere you guys don't know um one of them I'm going to grab real quick and show you where is it oh here it is so using the hickory smoke distressed i'm going to take one of these little collective kind of little stamp things because you know i'm into the mail art like i said here recent so these can actually be turned into like little images almost like stamps themselves and literally i'm going to take this and just kind of put it down like that and that's how i did this one this one has that real subtle postmark on it see that oh gorgeous and I actually use some of my um shimmer mist on there as well so that spotting is shimmer mist that worked really well okay so see so this is ready to go we kind of like took a black and white image just really kept it black and white added a couple of stamps with the distress him holds distress look look how good that looks and we took one of our jelly printed images. It prints out in black and white. That's cool. 
and then did a little glazing on it, some stamping. And with this one, we can do the same thing. Let me grab the Martha Stewart, because you guys know I like the Martha Stewart in the champagne gold, but she's not doing champagne gold anymore, but she has some other golds that are working nicely, so I'm okay with that. Any kind of light, glazy, craft gold. What time is it? Is, okay, we got stuff to do still. Okay, but I wanted to show you guys this because I have just gone insane, honestly, with making so many of my handmade stamps like this, little collage stamps, and then to be able to do these kind of things with it. I think it takes our work to a whole nother level. Like you can literally just take pictures of your own work and just that quickly, oh, look at that. So with the glazing on it, see how the glazing adds a nice finish level to layer. You can see how the glazing is on there now. And just that little bit of staining from a piece of um, paper and image. You saw how quick it was for me just to take it from our from my um, my phone. So that means any of the images that you're doing, you literally can take any of your work. Like all of these images are mine, except for this one. This was a piece of that um, Indian, you know, Asian paper that you buy like at Blick and what have you. Um, and turn it into art that you can use, that you know is yours, blah, blah, blah. You guys know how we do it. So I could just go on and on. I could just do a video just on working with this faux, uh, faux memo, but I don't want you to think that I'm just trying to sell you on it. So, cause I'm not, I just, you know, want to share it with you. So when I'm using it, because I will be using this in the videos and in, in my in my book, in my journal, because I'm in love with that thing. Um, you'll know what I'm you'll know what I'm using. And, um, you know, if you want to get it, you do. If you don't, it's OK, too. So now here we are with we're going to get right into collaging. Let me try to move. Mm, I really like how this came out. Just that beautiful. Wow. Oh. Let me put that over here. Okay. So we're going to get to collaging because the day is collage day. Um, you can see how I kind of was playing around with some ideas. So, so many of you downloaded the printables. Um, I know some of you, a handful of you had a problem with it. And I think part of it was iPads. You can't, you can't do, download from Teachable with an iPad. It's not, and plus, um, it just, it's just not compatible. So from your laptop or your desktop, it works better. Um, also, some of you were already in the school. So once you actually downloaded the code, it was over there in your um, classes. So if you went to the top and saw all classes, then it would be in there. So many of you worked it out. But I mean, I think almost 400 of you guys went and grabbed it. So um, and, and started printing with it and stuff. So this is the pack that I'm working with. So I took this one, which is actually, I don't even think that this was in the pack that I'm working with you guys. This is next month's pack. So I don't know. I just kind of grabbed and started working with it. And after I did, I thought, I think this is next month's, but this was this month. So the link is still up there, the, the code. So go grab it and uh, get started with working with them. So I kind of took this one and kind of started playing with it all. So let's go ahead and glue this down. You guys remember that what we did is we put this page down. So I have this here because I'm thinking that I'm going to use this print. These were all of my prints that I did with you guys last week. And I think this is the one I'm going to go for for my next page. So I have that there ready to go. Because we're going to do this collage page and then we're going to get this down. I'm going to show you how to put um, this down, how I'm looking at doing it. And so we'll see, getting those done so you guys will know how to start working through your book. But in the meantime, let's get the first page done. Let me just turn this over and get a place to do the gluing. So I'm going to take this piece here, that image. And I'm going to go ahead and actually I'm going to use 
the glitter glue. Now, the glitter glue, a lot of people ask me about this as well. This is a PVA. PVAs are really good archival glues to use, especially for anything that you kind of want to have around for a little while. Um, and once they stick, they stay. I love them. But you can use any white glue. You can use tacky glue. You can use um, <clears throat> the fabric tack. Uh, you can even use Elmer's glue, truthfully. Um, but what makes this glue work, I tell you, is this metal tip. And they even on Amazon, I'll try to remember to put the link down, but there are even, um, you can just buy the little bottles with the metal tips. I think you get four in a in a uh, pack for like five dollars. It's even worth just getting the bottles empty and put your own white glue in there <clears throat> if you don't want to spend the money on this glitter glue. Because it, it PVAs are expensive, but they're worth it. All PVAs are costly, but a good one. So I'm putting that down. That's one of my images from one of my photographs that I've. Um, it's one of my little Buddhas. I collected that one in Australia when I was visiting my friend Bendy. That has one of my little crystals on it. So anyhow, that's one of my photographs that then I've collaged with some other things. This is just simply a stamp that I stamped on with some bits and pieces. But I actually, I liked it better on the reverse side. So I'm going to go ahead and glue that down. So we're going to work in this book, we're going to work back and forth between collaging the pages, um, doing pr jelly printing when we need it, um, working with creating um, some collage pieces and, you know, just kind of go with the flow. The main thing is that for me, this book, when it's done, it's going to be, this is uh, going to be sort of mail art, the idea of that and traveling to dis distant places and the idea of travel and what we discover when we travel. So each page and entry will kind of tell a story of sorts. So I like that down there. Um, I had this piece. Where did I think I was going to put that? Maybe, maybe over here and just kind of then cut that off. Maybe I'll put that there, but I kind of want to use this one that I just made. Yeah, we could put that up there like a stamp. I like that. And because I already had some of these stamps made that I thought I would... put on here. Let me see. I have some more in my little box. This is what I do in the evenings when I just want to veg out and listen to a podcast or a video or something. I have all my little stuff and then I'll kind of that one with a little bit of red is nice. So this, I kind of want this to, this is going to tell the story of travels and we'll put that right underneath there. So just do the half of it. So this is the contents page, right? So this is where the story unfolds, All right? Okay, let me just do that so I can really get a good pressure, but I don't want that ink. I mean, not the ink, I don't want the glue to get on the other side. Okay, so I'll go ahead and kind of want to rip that because I don't want it to... I want to have that jagged edge. I don't want it to be a, a fresh cut because I sort of ripped these other papers. So we're going to rip this. Okay. 
there. Okay, I'm loving that. So far, so good. Okay. So, I was thinking about putting this down here. So, with collaging, I just, we'll be using different mediums. Um, we'll be using some... Um, uh, matte medium, gloss medium, mostly matte medium. I don't really like a lot of gloss because I don't really want, I don't like my pages to stick together. Um, so as a glue for some of the collage and we'll use some matte medium. We'll definitely be using this glitter glue or a good PVA. Um, probably for superficial things, the glue stick, but not for anything that, you know, I might use it to put some layer down and then do a, a heavier layer. So we'll be using different glues for different situations, but mostly PVA we'll be using and the matte, the matte mediums. Okay. Alrighty. So we still kind of want to put this up here. Um, Kind of figuring it out. Let me see what else. <laughs> I feel like I want some more. Um, I'm going to use those right now because I'm definitely going to use that. So I want to kind of keep the colors kind of going. Kind of want to make the front of this look like it would if you were. Um, If you were actually, look at this, I might put it straight like that. If you were actually, you know, we take this off now. So the way we would do this is I'm going to cut it. You see, I kind of overprinted there. I'm trying to decide, do I want, can you see, where is it? If you can see it there. It overprinted a little bit there. I'm trying to decide if I want to keep that on there. I think I will. And I'm going to keep this little serrated edge too, because that's kind of cool. It sort of looks like, you know, a stamp. So I'm going to go ahead and peel this off and put this where I want it. It literally just peels right off the backing. And we'll just put it right down here. I'll put a link in the video. So for those of you who may be interested, um, there's a coupon code, I think for 10% off or something like that. If you go through that link, but, um, I just wanted to make sure I put something down like that so that it's, it feels like it's dry, but I just want to make sure. Okay. Lovely. Oh, I love it. So let's see. I'm going to just. Put a lot of stamps but i feel like i want to use a little bit more of this tissue paper here so i kind of want to integrate a little bit more of this sort of like i like building up these layers of the tissue paper so here again I like to use, let me see, because this will go down and it'll get, it'll become transparent. Maybe I want to do it like that. How about do it this way? Yep. So the whole thing for me and my work is layers. I'm, I, everything I do, I am always working in layers. So I have a tendency to take my time and create layers. If I'm painting, if I'm jelly printing, if I'm even making these little DIY stems, our coffee stain, everything I do in layers. I don't do a one and done because it always still looks like a one and done. <laughs> because it looks like, uh, you know, you just kind of, which way did I have this? Maybe like this. It just kind of looks like it. Like it doesn't have a history or anything to it, right? It just sort of looks like you kind of got it all done down and you were done. One layer. I just, 
So even when I'm collaging, I'm just going to keep on going back over, building up layers like this. Um, I'll put that stamp there. I like this stamp. And these stamps, literally, you're talking about working with bits and pieces that you could just really throw in a trash. But you know, you don't because either it's coffee stained or it's a neat part of a print or it's a nice expensive paper and it's just this little bit left and you're like oh do I want to throw it away and um so yeah I think I'm gonna take a bit of this like I said this one is going to be uh, marches I think this is marches uh I have done so many of these. I had so much fun when I started working on my printables. That's the other thing I do in the in the in my downtime is I make these printables from a lot of my uh, prints and my artwork, things like that. So, yeah, put that right there because I can cut it off the top. I like that there. So this is going to be April's. There's a lot of good ones. Mm. I, I have a hard time myself making a decision which one I like the best. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, I'll put that right there. Okay. I always like using a tissue just to kind of that way if the glue rope comes out and still you know you kind of, you're not rubbing it around the place you're actually absorbing it a bit okay I'm gonna put that one there where's the other one I had like this one so I could use a little bit more glue right here on this edge so we can get this down flat I see so this is what we're looking like oh, I love it yep so we're just going to do a lot of building up so these are all those see I've used book pages to make these Ugh. so we're doing a lot of this over in, in my patreon you know like definitely four times a week if not more because I'm in my studio working all the time and so I share a lot of me just working and techniques and then also showing specific techniques. I don't believe in just showing you what I'm doing and you're looking at me thinking, looking at my video thinking, what in the world? Well, how is she doing it? I want to know how to do it. <laughs> so it's a lot of instruction, lots of tutorials. Put that down. Okay. That there too. I've seen um, people do various making stamps various ways, and I just, you know, of course, love the idea of it. But here again, I'm always trying to formulate it to my own aesthetic. And those of you who are following me, I know you follow me because we have similar aesthetic. So, you know, you look at the things, you're like, oh, that's nice. But I would never, like a lot of the way the stamps are made, I would never, I would never use the stamps that way. So I kind of had to play around and figure out how, like, how would I, like, if you look at this one right here, oh, look at how gorgeous it is. Oh my goodness. You know, it's like, how do you make the stamp that looks the way that we like to work? Look at that one right down there. So they're yummy. Okay, so let's, what else do I want to do this page? I feel like I'd even like to put a bit of this, like, right down here at the bottom. It's got a lot of color, so it's too much color for right around here. But I have this little spot down there, and I feel like I could literally maybe put this down there in this corner here. 
And should I do it this way? So it looks like it's kind of like this edge better. So it looks like it's kind of a document that's just kind of been lost its top. So put that right there like that. Yeah, like that. So that's probably let me see what else I want to do. I feel like I've got a good amount here. I want to do something here, but where's my, um, I don't know. I'm going to do a little bit of my scripting. That's for sure. Let me see, where is that? I just want to make sure that this is working well. I'm going to use my my ink, my brush. Before I do that, I just want to make sure that this is all, you know what, I'm not going to do that yet because we have to do the other side. And if I paint right now, we'll be able to turn it over. So maybe I'll do that right before we sign off. What time is it? Good, just 30, 36 minutes already. I'm going so fast. Okay, so I'm happy with this for the most part, but I'm going to come back with my Sumi brush and finish it up. But I think right now there's a like it just looks like you know a lot going on with the contents kind of concept. Um, and I want it to be a collective. I really want it to look. I feel like I want to put this on here. I put these little label things on the pages too, so that. You do want to have like a color coordinated label you can or you can just you know tear around it so let me I want to put this here I'm gonna put a little bit of text right there so I'm just gonna cut straight because I want it to go against I want to put that sort of like right there so let me just take that off. Let's see. I want to kind of put that. I'm trying to get this right in there some kind of way because I want some of this text. Like I felt like I needed something over in that side. Okay. So this is what I call my intuitive collaging. I literally just kind of have an idea of the pieces I'm working with. And I just kind of start because... I'm not kind of like one to plan it all the way out. I just kind of, you know, I'm done when I'm done. Like, I'll know when it's done. Just, you know, it'll be that magic moment where you know, okay, this is good. I'm just kind of getting little bits of glue down. I feel like I want something else there like I like the stamps in threes but which one do I want hmm. no oh I know I can use these little passport stamps that I've gotten it's washi tape and I think I got these from Alibaba. Actually, I just got some in from an Etsy shop. Let me look at it real quick. Um, I'll try to remember to put it down. Link it below. I've learned to put the PVA on this because they will peel up. They're sticky enough, but not for the long term. So I just go ahead and put some PVA on there and then just kind of put this on. I like these like past book stamps. See, I just got some more of them in. So I got this one. See if you can see it. See how cool they are? 
And this is the same one that I have right now that I was just using. Come on, please. I see, immigration officer. So the shop, the Etsy shop is, she always sends a cute little thank you link. Um, last time she gave me a 10% code, I forgot to use it. Boy. So the shop is, and I'll I'll put a I'll put the link to her shop because she's really sweet. She gets stuff right out. Wintertime crafts. Wintertime crafts. She gets stuff right out to you. So um yeah. I really love those. Okay, I'm gonna stop there because I wanna do some brush painting. And, but I love it and I want to do something with this content. I haven't decided yet. I may just, I would like something translucent, like something that's almost like a clear tape. I think I have some clear tape, you know, just like scotch tape, like you've something scotch tape together. I think I might do that right over the contents. So we still see it, but it doesn't look like it's like it is now, which it looks like it's purpose, like I purposely am trying to work around it, which I am, because I don't want to cover it up. So I'll come back and do that with it, but we can see how, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get a close up so you guys can see all the goodies. So that's our first page, I love it. Like I said, we're gonna do something, I, I still got something else I'm gonna do to that, but right now we'll stop there. See, this page is already going to be nice and thick. Now, let's go to the next side because I'm going to show you how. It's going to be pretty straightforward and easy. We're going to put down. Where is. Okay, this is the one I want to put down. So, what we're going to do. I'm literally going to, I'm going to split this, I'm going to split it right in half, like pretty much where my color margins are. Now remember, we're just putting this down as our first layer. We'll be collaging over this. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and fill the page with glue. So what I kind of do is I'm just going to kind of get this middle area. What's nice about this tip is that you can cover a lot of area over and over again like I'm doing. I'm basically kind of scratching the surface a bit. But what's nice is that it's a thin layer, so it's not goopy. You know, it's not like this big goopy bit. And then I'll take and turn this over. Sorry for such a messy desk. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run a bead of glue right close to the edges so that um, this is going to go all the way down for sure, all the way to the top. It's the sides. I'm not sure about how far they're going to go over. So we'll just do it like that. And okay, perfect. Yep, and we can literally just put this down. Look how good that looks already. Oh, print right over that page. You can't even tell that there's text there. We're going to do the same thing for this side. You can also sort of lay it down and figure out, okay, this one goes over pretty far. So kind of do it there. So this is going to be the first layer of our print so I don't know what I'm going to do to this I mean I know I'm going to do some collaging but I may collage with some more jelly prints because we're going to collage with different things but my whole feel is going to be this idea of mail art you know distant places I may actually collage with some images on some of them I don't know I'm gonna keep it open that's just the general direction that the book is going to go in, right? Sort of the general feel of it, but it'll take, we'll do a lot of twists and turns with it. 
so that's a good layer. So now here, let's go ahead and lay that down. Yep, there we are. And doing it like this, we're going to get a good, and what I like about it too, is you can see like with this, this was the Blick um, matte acrylic and you it's really pretty trance um it's really pretty opaque you really can't see the text through that one but this one was the color shift the folk art with the um the aqua and the orange and you can see a bit of the text coming through which is nice but you can't read a thing i mean it's so subtle and then on this one you don't see anything so that's nice you know just to look at what the different um, pages are going to do so this is like one side here so like what see how it's um i may just really glue that down strong this peeled up a little bit here when i went to turn the page but it's just i need to put more glue there so i could put more glue or i could cut it but i'm gonna put more glue and then let it let it really dry really set so right here is how we're doing this page flipping it over and really just burnishing it from the back side that way you don't rip your paper but you can really get a good really get it to set in there and so I'm going to, let me see, I'm going to rip, I'm going to start off by ripping things. I don't really want to um, cut my edges too much because I kind of want it to have like a, a um, sort of that torn edge, you know, hanging out the top of the book over time these pages will really build up and we'll just have a lot of beautiful texture so I'm probably going to do a lot more ripping than I am cutting of stuff off the edge yeah so we get more of this kind of thing here and the same is true over here but I'm not going to cut this one yet because basically what I want to do is really let is to let it dry. So what we're gonna do is, where is my, here, my wax paper. So let me show you what you do is, even if you're working in your in your book, you know, you can start working ahead if you wanna put a couple of different color things down or you put it down like this and then you collage in them. Don't feel like you have to stay at the same pace with me. I stay at this pace because I, you know, I come to you guys once a week. Um, but you may move through your book a little faster and then start another one. You may have a couple of done by the time I get this one done and you're still working along with me and trying different things. And you could literally do a whole book of just some of the collage techniques that we just did, but put a layer, um, of wax paper between, and then we're going to let our book really settle down and, I normally would, you know, settle down and let it go under weight. But right now, what I'm going to do here is see how this is peeling up because um, it's not a lot of glue down in there. And I started moving it before it was dry. So that's okay. So I'm going to put a good bit of glue in here. Right there. Just run it all the way down. And uh, so whenever that happens, don't... Don't concern yourself, just, there is, hmm. And then what you want to do is you just want to take your bone folder or something like that. And then I'm just going to literally push this right down in here with that good strong glue. Wipe it off as you go. And, uh, and then I'm going to close this book up and I'm going to let it, sit under weight and then that'll be this problem will be solved and that's the thing when you're working in your altar book try to do you know 
a spread at a time. Really, that's the trick is to do a page spread at a time and let it sit and dry good and then do the next one. Because if you kind of keep on working and don't let it dry, then you start, that's when you start getting more buckling and, you know, things can just kind of go in directions that you don't really want it to go in. So basically what you want to do is just like, like this is a good section done. In fact, I was going to do some sumi on here, but I'm not even going to do that right now. I'll do it. Well, I better do it now because then I won't be able to do it next time when you guys see it because I won't want to, I want to be able to turn this page and get started on the next side. So I can do that and let it dry up and then I'll close my book off camera but I'm really taking my bone folder and really burnishing it down in here and it's laying down beautifully now so let me get my little my ink I just want to kind of do something here I feel like that area is calling to some intuitive scripting <laughs> And because I have different weight um, papers, and see what happens is that it's just like bleeding in so beautifully. Ah. And up here next to the contents where I'm going to end up doing some, I'm just kind of kind of bring that right down here. And that way I can integrate contents right into my page, even though I'm going to um, probably put some of that scotch tape right over it. So what I'm doing now with the scripting is it's just bringing the whole page together. And because I have different um, types of paper it's going to bleed different ways and i'm you know i'm fine with that just right over the stamps so i'll get a lot of different things going on there and i quite like that so i feel like i'll stop there because it kind of gets it, it just integrates right into the page i love it yay i love that i feel like listen to me i love it then i say i feel like I want to do one more thing here. So you know that passport stamp? I'm going to take this and I'm going to use um, I'm going to use iced spruce because it's light but it'll kind of, it'll give me something down there without being too much. I'm gonna do it right over the Sumi thing that I just did. Oh yeah. Because remember this is really past bookie, so I'm kind of just kind of getting that in. I just use bits and pieces of the stamp. Yeah, that's perfect. And those the those the stress ones like the ice spruce and the um the hickory smoke, those are some of my favorite ones. The gathered twigs in this. I don't even know if they still have. He still actually has all of these. But I like these because you get this real subtle print. The colors themselves are so subtle. So, you know, you can it, it adds without adding too much of a layer. And I feel like that just really finishes it off. You know, it really gives it that really eclectic mail art past book like an old page in a past book or something um been around the world type of look all righty so here we are hope you guys loved this session from how much we can do with this faux mimeo because i will definitely be working for it on these i'm feeling like i can like this against the celadon look at that so i will be playing with this some of these in there. I definitely love this one there. I think that kind of goes as a nice transition. But we'll be doing um, 
some different things but that's our first page so you get your contents you know your first page and then go ahead and figure out what you want to be here and then let let your page settle down and uh we'll just keep on moving along so i'm actually going to take the other piece of um wax paper close it up and then just allow this you know, just put it down under some weight and just allow it to settle and it'll be just fine. So there we are. All right. Take care. Thanks a lot for hanging out over here with me. If you're not already a, me uh, a, listen, a member, because I think of you guys as creators and members, not like, I don't like that word subby, but that's just me. Um, subscribe to the channel, hang out with us, and we'll just keep on moving through this. And if you want to hang out with me more, you can join me over on Patreon or over my teachable school, but we'll have um, more to come. All right, there we have it. All right, guys, love you. Take care, and until next week, bye-bye.